All right, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the S22 Ultra versus the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Which one should you be getting? The iPhone is the newest one. The S22 Ultra is almost a year old now at this point. So should you still be considering an S22 Ultra or if you have the S22 Ultra now, should you get the iPhone 14 Pro Max? Let's talk about it. Starting off the design, both of them are very different and still gorgeous in my opinion. They're still getting a premium looking device here because the sides are glossy and the back is matte on both of them. I believe some form of Corning Gorilla Glass. I think the sides of the iPhone are stainless steel and then the S22 Ultra is aluminum armor of some form. So both of them should be pretty well durable, but of course I would always use a case just to add some protection and some more grippiness just because though both phones can be a bit slippery, but without a case, I find that the S22 Ultra is a bit less uncomfortable only because it's got like a note-like design. Basically what that means is that the top and bottom sides are flat, the left and right sides are curved, giving the corners a bit of a sharp corner in my opinion. So in the palm, you feel it quite a bit versus the iPhone 14 Pro Max, it's flat all around, flat back, flat front, flat sides, and then the corners are rounded, giving it a, I wouldn't say more comfortable, but slightly comfortable feeling compared to the S22 Ultra. The edges do end up being a little bit sharp because of all those flat sides, but I would take this over the S22 Ultra's corner bumping or just poking into my palm in my opinion. I just find it to be just a little bit uncomfortable. Even with the case, I still feel that corner just feeling a little bit too sharp in my opinion. This 22 Ultra does have USB-C versus Lightning on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, and both of them have dual firing speakers, which quite honestly, both of them sound pretty good for watching videos or listening to music. Uh, if anything, the iPhone maybe sounds just a little bit better, but honestly, for the average person, I think it sounds good enough for, on both of them. The S22 Ultra does have the power button and the volume rocker on the same side versus the iPhone 40 Pro Max that has them on opposite sides, but also has a mute switcher, which in my opinion is very convenient because you can easily mute your phone if you forget to set to mute when you are in the middle of something where you can't access your phone right away. The S22 Ultra also has the actual physical SIM card slot, which may or may not be something that's a downfall for you. For me personally, it can be a little bit annoying just because I'm constantly switching devices, which I try not to, but I'm constantly switching devices to review them and so it's much easier to just pop a sim out and put it into another sim versus having to go through the whole eSIM process. The process itself wasn't too difficult with Mint Mobile because that's what I have right now. So it wasn't a terrible process but just the fact that I can't just grab my sim card out and put it into another sim. That's my only complaint, but otherwise it may be up to you to decide if that's a bad thing or a good thing for you. And this one to Ultra also has the embedded S Pen with it, which is pretty cool and pretty convenient. And it's a major selling point of the S22 Ultra now, or I guess going with the Ultra in the future. But personally, I barely used it. I think it's a cool feature when you're actually gonna use it. I'm not a big fan of taking notes on here. I mainly only use it when I have to cross an X out for an ad, because sometimes they make the X's really small on an ad, or the occasional writing a note on a photo. So I'll take a photo of something, and I wanna remind myself about a certain thing that happened in that photo. So I'll take a note on the photo itself, but like actually taking notes, that's not really gonna happen. Um, but otherwise, you got the Bluetooth features as well on the S Pen where you can use it as a shutter, you can use it to swipe around and whatnot. Um, it's pretty cool, it's a party trick probably, but um, yeah, I barely used it, but it's there if you want it. And both phones are IPX68 water resistant and dust resistant, so if you get splashed by water, you'll be just fine. Now something I keep forgetting to mention in all my reviews and comparisons is that the haptic feedback, I wanna say that the iPhones is just a bit better compared to the S22 Ultras. The S22 Ultras just feels a little bit weak compared to the iPhones, it feels a little bit stronger, but I think the best one so far, which I forgot to mention in the Pixel videos, the Pixels, it's actually pretty good compared to both of these devices, in my opinion. I like the feel of it. It's a little bit aggressive, but to some people, it may be better. Um, but the iPhone compared to the S22 Ultra right now, I would give it to the iPhone. As far as the displays, it's gonna be a 6.8 inch, 120Hz, 1440p, Quad HD Dynamic AMOLED display on the S22 Ultra versus on the iPhone 40 Pro Max. It's a Super Retina XDR OLED, 6.8 inch, 120Hz, just under 1440p display, honestly. Both displays are very good for just watching a ton of content. If you're a big content consumer, both big displays are gonna be great for that. If anything, the S22 Ultra is just a hair more vibrant and more poppy with the colors. Samsung displays are traditionally like that, so if you like a more vibrant and vivid looking display, then you wanna go with the S22 Ultra. But honestly, 
both of them look pretty good in my opinion. When scrolling around the OS and the system and browsing around in apps, honestly, both of them are pretty much overall smooth, but I will give it to the iPhone being a little bit smoother because the whole system UI is way more smoother and more nicer with the animations compared to the S22 Ultra that still isn't the greatest yet. I think it's still pretty smooth, but it still could use some work with those animations. Now the S22 Ultra does have a curved display. It's not super aggressive, but you still can feel it and may get accidental touches every now and then. The system or the UI is pretty well optimized nowadays so that it doesn't recognize the palm by accident. But if you ever do have issues, a case will solve those issues. And I also have to mention this every time that it's so much simpler to install a tempered glass screen protector and cheaper too on a flat display of the iPhone versus the curved display of S22 Ultra. And the iPhone does have a more rounded corner looking display versus the S22 Ultra that's more box to box, which in theory, I think you might get a better screen to body ratio with the box the box display of the S22 Ultra versus the rounded corners of the iPhone, but at least the bezels are pretty much uniformly the same size around the whole display on the iPhone versus on the S22 Ultra, you are getting just a slightly thicker chin compared to the sides and the top bezels. And the iPhone does have that pill cutout compared to the single cutout of the S22 Ultra, so it is gonna intrude into your content a lot more. I feel like if I didn't have the big max version of the iPhone, I would definitely notice that big pill cut out a lot more. But of course, the reason it has that is because of the face ID features and whatnot. So getting into biometrics, the face ID on the iPhone blows away, in my opinion, the facial recognition of the S22 Ultra. I think it's way more reliable, way more secure, and just easier to use, in my opinion. I find myself sometimes trying to use the facial recognition and it's not working. About 90% of the time it does work on the S22 Ultra, but there's always that once every once in a while time that it doesn't work and it's just annoying. And of course you have the under display fingerprint sensor of the S22 Ultra, which for the most part I find to be pretty reliable, fast, and you know convenient in my opinion. So just the fact that I have both options on the S22 Ultra versus just Face ID on the iPhone, I always give that a nice win on the S22 Ultra. As far as performance, the S22 Ultra is gonna have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 with either eight or 12 gigabytes of RAM, depending on which model you have. It also depends on which region you're in because you might get an Xenos, but for me, I have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. On the iPhone 14 Pro Max, you are gonna be getting the A16 Bionic chip with six gigabytes of RAM. So let's talk about the performance here. Honestly, both of them are really good in my opinion, regardless of which one you have you're gonna get a good performing device. It's pretty hard to say that any device nowadays will have bad performance. Where it will make the most difference will definitely be in their heat management. Cause I find that both devices get relatively warm after some time, especially if you're performing heavy intensive tasks such as playing games is the most intensive stuff that I'll ever do in my daily life. Of course, there's also taking photos and videos, but honestly, I'm not always taking photos and videos, but in those moments that I am, I would still give it the props to the iPhone 40 Pro Max because regardless of what I'm doing, well, whether the phone gets hot or not, it still consistently performs well. Versus the S22 Ultra, I wouldn't say that it dips down a lot in performance, but you can, like I said, feel the phone getting warm, which is similar to the iPhone, so it gets relatively about the same warmth. But I feel like the S22 Ultra's software and stuff like that just lacks a little bit of strong fluidity of consistency. The animation sometimes get just a little bit choppy. Uh, the shutter lag in the camera stuff, and when you're taking photos and videos, you will experience some shutter lag. But otherwise, for the most part, most day to day stuff on my everyday usage, I have a great performance on both devices. So, really, it will come down to the small nitty gritties, but really, like I said, both of them will be great performing devices. Now, as far as the software, you are gonna be getting One UI 4.0 with Android 12 currently. Now you are gonna be getting eventually Android 13 with One UI 5.0, so I haven't gotten that update yet, so I'm still waiting on that. But with the iPhone, you are gonna be getting iOS 16. So that's one of the things that definitely iPhone and just Apple in general has uh, over the S22 Ultra or Samsung in general is the updates. It's way more consistent with the updates. Everyone traditionally gets the updates at the same time. Of course, it may depend on the carrier and whatnot, but on Samsung devices, some older devices or other devices have to wait to get the update, like I'm still waiting, like I said, for the S22 Ultra's update to get to One UI 5.0 with Android 13. So that's one of the things. And also the software support, actually, both of them are actually really good right now. So 
iPhones traditionally get, I think like what, five to six years of OS updates versus the Samsung devices nowadays will be getting four years of OS updates and five years of security updates. That's still plenty good enough for my opinion. So honestly, both, the, both of them do a really good job when it comes to the software support now. Now the actual everyday usage of the software is a little bit different because each of them provide a vast variety of different software features and customization features and whatnot. So hopping right into the lock screen, you do have a decent amount of customizable features on the lock screen for both of them from changing the clock style, the color, adding widgets, but some of the ways you interact with each lock screen is a little bit different. Some of the cool things I like with the iPhone though is that you can add a depth effect. You can also add focus modes to each wallpaper so you can easily switch to a certain wallpaper to add a certain focus mode. Both of them also have an always on display where the iPhone will literally look like an always on display. It just dims down your lock screen. You can still see your widgets, you can still see your notifications, but it's just a dimmed down version of your lock screen. Versus on the S22 Ultra, it's just your time and your notifications. And once you hop into the home screen, this is where the S22 Ultra is just much better. So you have the freedom to do basically anything you want. You can customize your home screen however you want, move apps and widgets anywhere you feel you want to. You can stack widgets on both of them, which adds the cleanliness of the widgets on both devices. But just the fact that you can move apps anywhere just takes the win for me. Also the fact that you can make the grid size bigger. Because I have a bigger display on the iPhone, I want the grid size to be bigger in my opinion. I would love to have five across, so it just would make the space be used up a lot better in my opinion. I also like that I can remove the labels of all the icons just by using good luck. Because good luck just offers so much customization. I don't even use all of those like different, what is it? I forget what they're called, but different uh, settings you can change in uh, good luck. I only use the home up version of it. The module, I think is what they're called. I forget what they're called, but there's definitely modules or whatever that you can customize individual stuff. It's crazy how much customization you have. It's a not technically a third party app, but because it is made by Samsung, but it is an app you have to download on the side if you want to add all these other features. And both of them have an app library slash app drawer. But again, the ability to customize how you want your app drawer to be set up is way more convenient on the S22 Ultra. So you can literally have folders, you can have apps on certain pages, you can scroll freely throughout all those pages. Like, I don't know, the ability to customize your app drawer, in my opinion, is way more convenient than just the iPhone itself or iOS itself deciding to make folders for you and then you can't move the folders or you can't move the apps from folder to folder. And then Android and One UI also have the quick settings and notifications all in one spot versus on the iPhone or iOS traditionally has them split up. So you have the control center and you also have the notification center. So the way both of them work, honestly, in combination, both of them end up working just fine. They give you what you need. So notification center gives you notifications. And for the most part, it does a decent job organizing your notifications. One thing it does have that I really like is the notification summary it just makes it easier and nicer to keep my non necessary notifications to pop up all at once versus constantly annoying me at all times. And then the quick settings versus control center, both of them again are clean, easy to understand and just get access to your settings and toggle certain things on and off. One thing I forgot to mention though is with the brightness, both the displays get plenty bright enough in my opinion, whether you're inside, outside in a bright day, both of them are just fine when it comes to the brightness. But that's just the basics of each OS system. As you can see, S22 Ultra definitely gives you a ton of customization features to tailor and change up your home screen, your app drawer, whatever you want to customize to best fit you. Versus on iOS, it kind of does all that stuff for you. It tries to learn for you and tries to customize it for you. So if you pick up one S22 Ultra and go to a different S22 Ultra, as in a different user's S22 Ultra, you'll probably find that they're set up differently and will have to learn how they have it set up Versus on an iPhone, you could pick up your iPhone and then pick up someone else's, else's iPhone and probably be able to get through all this stuff pretty easily. So that's the main things when it comes to the OS overview. As far as ecosystems, that being Samsung has Google versus the Apple ecosystem, honestly, both of them work really well. They have very similar stuff, such as being able to quick share slash airdrop, be able to use Find My on Samsung slash Google, and also using Apple's Find My. You have FaceTime versus 
Duo slash Meet. You have iMessage versus RCS. I will say I think overall Apple's ecosystem may be a little bit better fine-tuned and more seamless because they control that whole ecosystem versus on Samsung. You have the Samsung products, but you can also connect to Google devices, you can connect to Windows devices, and that means that they have to work together to create an ecosystem. So it may not always be perfect and be as you know, customizable and seamless as it feels like on Apple devices, but for the most part, you can make it work, which then adds to that flexibility. You can really customize your whole ecosystem, have a Windows computer, have a Samsung pair of buds or Sony buds or whatever, and really feel like you have a, a lot of options out there right, when it comes to building your ecosystem. Versus on Apple, if you really want to build a good ecosystem, you would want to get an iPad, you know, an Apple Watch, AirPods, a MacBook, and all that stuff to really feel like you're all tied in together to work perfectly, which I've never experienced that, but I'm sure it all works well. Again, Samsung can similarly do that with their Samsung watches and all that stuff, Samsung earbuds and tablets, and I think they have Samsung computers now that work pretty well. But Again, it will depend on what you're already using or what other people around you are using. So if you're more tied down on one, then you might want to consider one over the other. But if you can make the switch, honestly, I think both of them provide a pretty decent ecosystem. This 22 Ultra also has Samsung DeX, which basically allows you to use your phone as a computer. So this is the computer. You plug it into a monitor and you have a computer there ready to go. Um, you also have something called Secure Folder, which basically allows you to securely hide documents, apps, files, whatever you want to do, you can hide them all in secure folder. And another thing the S22 Ultra has on top is going to be the multitasking software abilities. So for one, both of them do have picture in pictures. So you can watch YouTube and browse around on another app, but the S22 Ultra can also split the screen. So it can do one app at the top and one app at the bottom. You may think, when would I do this? One, you can't do it with YouTube as well. So put a YouTube video up and use another app at the bottom in a slightly uh, smaller aspect ratio, which might actually help with like reachability. Um, but you can also just browse like two banking apps, two shopping apps, two whatever apps to compare different things. So I think that be, will be pretty useful. The one thing I don't ever use is like dropping windows. I don't drop windows at all. You can do that by using the edge bar, which is another great feature in my opinion. So you can hide away other apps and also have access to your app library in a quick, easy fashion and be able to set up your uh, multitasking pairs and whatnot, which is pretty cool. But um, definitely multitasking is a lot better on the S22 Ultra. So if you're a multitasking beast, you're going to love that on the S22 Ultra. At the end of the day, both software experiences provide a great experience in my opinion. I would personally choose the software experience of the S22 Ultra. I prefer the customizable features over a lot of the iMessage and even the fluidity. I would give up a little bit of fluidity just to have all those stock Android features. So as far as the cameras, honestly, for the average person, I feel like you're gonna be getting a really good camera here and a very powerful camera system on both of them, in my opinion. So starting off the front, I think you get great selfies here. Of course, it depends on which color you look. The S22 Ultra does tend to be a more vivid, more colorful looking shot versus the iPhone that's more on the natural side. I also feel like it's a little bit more detailed on the S22 Ultra and it adds a little bit more natural bokeh effect. I think the sensor on the S22 Ultra is just a bit bigger so it's able to get that natural bokeh effect. But overall, both of them take pretty good selfies. In low light situations though, both of them have the same technique where they'll brighten up the screen to get a little bit of light in for the shot. And uh, both of them suffer quite a bit, but I would say the S22 Ultra does a slightly better job. And both front cameras have, I wanna call it like a macro front camera. Basically, you can really get really close to a subject and still be able to focus on it. So the autofocus is great on both of them when it comes to the front cameras. Now, when it comes to the video though, I would give it to the iPhone. The iPhone's video is just really good overall. So when it comes to the front video, I think it looks pretty good. It's able to stay well stabilized, good color, uh, just good detail overall. Versus the S22 Ultra, I just feel like the color and a little bit of lack of stabilization and a little bit of haziness just ends up killing it just a little bit less so it doesn't look as clean as it does on the iPhone. On the back, like I said on the front, you are gonna be getting an overall more vibrant and 
colorful looking shot versus on the iPhone 40 Pro Max. It can be a little bit vivid, but definitely more on the natural side and I wouldn't say darker side, but not as bright looking as it does on the S22 Ultra. I feel like the S22 Ultra edits the photo perfectly for you and you can post it how it is. Versus on the iPhone, it maybe you could use a little bit of editing and just wants to keep it natural to what you see naturally from your eyes. But of course, you can go into your settings and change up photographic styles, but I kept them standard on both of them essentially and that's what I ended up getting on both shots. So sometimes that vibrant looking shot does not favor the photos. So sometimes it looks a little bit way too oversaturated and uh, just too vibrant in my opinion. Um, sometimes a natural look definitely helps on the iPhone, but some other noticeable features here is on the ultra wide, both of them can get pretty close to a subject. So you end up getting a macro looking shot. It's kind of like their secret macro mode essentially. Um, so that's pretty good. But the ultra wide does end up being a little bit wider on the iPhone being 0.5x versus 0.6x. Not a huge difference, but just slightly different in case you want the biggest ultra wide you can get. And the telephotos is of course different because the S22 Ultra does have two of them. So one being 3x and then the next one being that 10x periscope zoom versus the iPhone that only has a 3x telephoto. So I would definitely give the win to the 3x and the 10x combination of the S22 Ultra over the iPhone just because it gets closer to a subject or can zoom further out than to a subject than uh, the iPhone can. And it does a pretty decent job. It looks really good. You can get a digital zoom of 100x. When would you use this? Probably never, but it's a nice gimmicky party trick if you ever wanted to use it. This is on the iPhone, you're stuck with just a 15x max zoom. And in low light situations, I would give it again to the S22 Ultra, just how it was on the front. The S22 Ultra does a really good job bringing in a decent amount of light and just making the photo look like it's during the evening versus in the middle of the night. Now, if you're in pitch black situations, both of them are pretty bad in my opinion. If anything, I think the iPhone does a decent job or a better job in like pitch black situations versus in low light situations. There is a difference there. Sometimes I'm in pitch black darkness. Sometimes it's like late in the evening. So the sun's down, but you can still see a little bit of light. Now, as far as video, both of them can shoot 4K and the S22 Ultra can actually go up to 8K, but this video or footage you're seeing is, was only taken in 4K. But Either way, both of them I think look for the most part pretty good, but I would still give it to the iPhone where it, I feel like it just looks cleaner, smoother looking, it just looks sharp, good color. The vibrant color of the S22 Ultra, I feel like I don't like that for video. I prefer to have a more natural and cinematic tone look to it, which is what the iPhone gives out in my opinion. So. I prefer video on the iPhone 14 Pro Max over video on the S22 Ultra, but it's definitely up to you for personal preference, but I just feel like it looks cleaner overall on the iPhone. And the S22 Ultra can zoom into a max of 20X versus just a max of 9X on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. You may not be using this very often, but if you're ever in a situation where you have to zoom in, like maybe a concert or something, you'll know that the S22 Ultra can zoom in a little bit further. And in low light situations, the S22 Ultra does again a better job of bringing in more light, but because the iPhone I feel like looks a little bit cleaner in video, it's kind of a mix between both. Like do you want to bring in more light or do you want a more still cleaner looking video? I don't know. I feel like both of them do a decent job in low light, but uh, it just up to you to decide which you prefer in a way. But overall, both of them look pretty good. I won't get into the other different camera stuff that you can do because there's cinematic mode on both of them. Uh, there's portrait mode on that stuff, but I'll be honest, I don't use that stuff. Um, it's there if you want to use it for a certain professional or certain user who wants to use that stuff. But for me personally, I just stick to the simple camera and video experience and the quality of stuff it looks good, like the shots and videos, I should say, not stuff. But the experience, I already mentioned it before, but I prefer the experience of the iPhone because I feel like it's more responsive. It just, as soon as you hit that shutter, boom, you're taking a shot, you're taking a video, you know it's gonna be good. Versus on the S22 Ultra, I feel like the shutter lag makes me feel like I need to take more photos for some reason. I feel like you might miss the moment with the S22 Ultra. But otherwise, the quality wise, both of them are pretty good. Now, as far as the battery life, the S22 Ultra is going to have a 5,000 mAh battery versus the iPhone is going to have a 4,323 mAh battery. 
and honestly the battery is much better on the iphone on the s22 ultra i want to say it's more of a 12 hour battery so i can wake up in the morning around like six in the morning and then get to about six in the afternoon or if i'm not using it heavily like on my work days where i'm not really using my phone i'll get to the end of the night and end with like 20 to like 15 percent battery life sometimes i'll even kill the phone with the iphone i can guarantee that i'll get to the end of the day and sometimes into the next day in the morning and i'll just have to charge in the morning so it's definitely more of a 24 hour cycle type of phone so i would give the edge as far as how long it lasts to the iphone but as far as charging speeds the s22 ultra is definitely better it takes just about under an hour to fully charge with 45 watts of super fast charging versus the iphone i forget what's the wattage but it takes well around an hour and like 30 to 45 minutes uh, so it takes a lot longer to charge so it may balance out where if you have to charge at some point in the afternoon with the s22 ultra you can count on the fact that if you have your 45 watt charger it'll charge up pretty fast and both of them also have wireless charging and the s22 ultra also has reverse wireless charging so at the end of the day which one should you be getting the s22 ultra or the iphone 14 pro max i feel like the more well-rounded device is the iphone but I just can't help picking the S22 Ultra. And the main thing is because of those customizable features, the multitasking, all that stuff, I just, I prefer to have that over the more well-run device, if, if that makes sense. It definitely, like you can see, it will come down to your personal preferences and what you prefer. Because I honestly don't care about iMessage. And the cameras, I think this is more than enough for me. I, the battery life, yeah, it kind of isn't as great, but the fast charging speed makes up for it, in my opinion. So. I personally would pick the S22 Ultra, especially since right now, if I had to buy one right now, I would easily go and buy the S22 Ultra just because you'll likely find it at a way cheaper price with good trading offers and all that stuff. So I would probably go towards this end. But there's one phone I probably would pick over this phone and that's the next phone I'm gonna be comparing it to and that's the Pixel 7 Pro. But if you already have this device and you're considering the iPhone, I don't know why you would be doing that, but I would tell you don't do that. <laughs> There's no reason to do that. I think you already have a really good device right now, but um, yeah, that's that's been it. I hope you guys enjoyed, hope this helped uh, and peace. Wow.